Recently, the company behind Zoho Office announced a brand new web browser touting some privacy and productivity features. You probably know, but right now the web browser market is completely saturated with Chrome or Chromium based web browsers that try to get users to switch away from Chrome by adding a bunch of random features. On the other hand, you have more privacy focused web browsers such as Firefox, LibreWolf, and Brave. What this browser is trying to do is both of those things, a bunch of random features and <laughs> security and privacy. So how well does it do at trying to be the best of both worlds? Well, that is what we're gonna talk about in this video, but you know what does well at its job no matter what? That's right, our sponsor. Private internet access, my personal favorite VPN in the game. I've been using them for years, even at one point, I accidentally leaked my password during a video. I personally use the PIA OpenVPN scripts for my Docker containers, but they have clients for Windows, Mac OS, Linux, mobile applications, and browser extensions, even ones that work on the Eula browser. They have a no log policy that has been proven multiple times in court. PIA will encrypt your traffic and run it through your choice of one of their servers in 84 different countries, keeping the prowling eyes off of both your data and your public IP address. There are other benefits, of course, like being able to access streaming services and other websites and accessing other geo-restricted content. Private internet access does not have device limits, so in your single household on your account, you can protect all your devices with no worries, and that's awesome for me, especially adding them to a bunch of different Docker containers. If you check out the link down below, you can get 83% off and four extra months completely for free. So let's backpedal a bit. Eula is a brand new browser focused on security and privacy created by Zoho. You may be wondering why you haven't heard of it, and basically it's because they're not doing a very good job at marketing it. When you Google it, the first result is the browser, thankfully, but it's kind of mixed in there between a bunch of D&D related search results. As of right now, there's only two videos on YouTube, one from switched to Linux and another one that is one of those like text to speech marketing type videos to actually try to promote the browser. And the only reason I know about this browser is because of the video by switched to Linux. This right here is a website private, secure, and super fast. If we go over to privacy here, you can see that supposedly this is a privacy first browser. They have a bunch of different features such as anonymized statistics, auto reset of your browser IDs, non-bothersome ads, geographical data isolation, and really a bunch of other things, no targeted ads. They have a bunch of filters that can block high risk cybersecurity threats, adware risks, crypto miners, among other threats. And it just kind of goes on to some more of the features, ad blockers, auto updates, and some of the stuff we just mentioned. If we go into modes, we're gonna talk about that more in just a little bit as one of the main features. If we go over to download here, if I click download, it'll automatically begin a download for Windows. They do have a Linux version here, which is pretty cool, but you can see it's an SH file. And it looks like it's only gonna work on a operating system that has apt, so any Debian-based operating system. They're gonna import their own private key. They have their deb right here under Linux stable. So they do have an option for Linux, but I do wish they would either just like published the Debian package or made a flat pack, even a snap package version would have been better than having users download an SH script. So now actually booting into it, looks like a mixture of Chrome and Brave. The UI is a little bit different. If we click somewhere, you, you can just tell it's Chrome under the hood, but there are many custom icons such as the back and forward buttons on the nav bar, but then the refresh and sidebar icons are that of Chrome. It does not have GTK mode on Linux and neither the Linux or Windows versions features a dark mode, but some of the elements from Chrome do come in a dark mode if your windows are in a dark mode. And this can give you kind of a weird result such as things like this. You can work around this, however, by just installing a dark theme from the Chrome Web Store. Opening a new tab brings you the tab page that tells you what mode you're in, shows you your top sites, lets you add sites, shows a privacy report of website trackers that it's blocked, and at the bottom it allows you to access other browser modes. It kind of reminds me of Brave's new tab page, but I do like Brave's a little bit better, of course, minus the ads. And a couple little minor nitpicks. Why is Google the top site when DuckDuckGo is the default search engine? And two, the Amazon link takes you to Amazon India. It makes sense, it's developed in India, but just a little something. So now let's talk about some of the feature sets. Out of the box, ads and trackers are completely blocked, preventing the desire of wanting extensions such as Adblock, 
There's also a tab manager that you can access by right clicking the tab bar and this allows you to see tabs scattered across all open windows and save sessions for later. You can also create tab groups for certain websites by clicking the tab and selecting a group. There's note taking functionalities and you can actually even attach notes to certain pages. But what is really kind of frustrating and weird is that you need a Zoho account to access this feature, a uh, rather odd move for a browser that touts itself as a uh, privacy first browser. It also has a screen capture functionality that allows you to take a screenshot of a page as well as annotate it. I actually use the Firefox screenshot feature a lot for these videos, so it's welcome to see it show up on other browsers too. But all of these are the minor features. Let's talk about some of the major features, and I don't know about you, but I currently have three web browsers installed. I use Edge primarily for school, Chromium for making these YouTube videos, and Firefox for general web browsing. That way I keep everything kind of isolated to its own workflows. With this browser, instead of doing that, I could technically utilize its modes. This means I could do things such as make websites open up in certain modes. Some other modes do special things. For example, there's a kids mode that is password protected from actually leaving the mode. It'll allow you to basically just block websites that you do not want your kids to visit. Developer mode has some bonus features for quick actions for browser testing, and it allows you to quickly install development related extensions. And then there's an open season mode, which allows you to browse the web without any of the privacy or security settings enabled, just in case if you need to access a website that for some reason is broken with these features enabled. Now the modes are cool, but it's not perfect. My main two wishes for this mode feature is one, the ability to create your own modes. For example, it'd be nice if I could make one for school mode and then like be able to block certain URLs on work mode. So then I just block sites that are kind of distracting. But there is a lot of potential with this idea though, maybe in the future they could add like a lockdown mode with complete and maximum privacy, including maybe disabling JavaScript or something like that. So now this is a privacy browser after all, so let's look at how well it does this. Going beyond what we described earlier, if we go to the privacy and security section, there are two options between standard and extreme privacy protection. With extreme mode, it has cookie blocking, URL tracker blocking, stealth mode, and search ads being blocked. This is somewhat similar to what Firefox does, allowing you to choose between standard and strict blocking. You can enable additional protections such as fingerprint blocking, the annoying element removal, removal of social media widgets, crypto mining protection, and network scanning blocks. So overall, you might think that this is a great option for privacy. Well there are some issues. And probably the most important one is the fact that it is not open source. This means we cannot prove exactly that EULA is doing what it says, nor what data it collects on you. And yes, EULA collects data itself. Now, supposedly it collects a minimal amount of data with the majority of it being device related states, which are most likely used for testing and debugging purposes and not what you're actually doing on the web browser. However, it does collect a randomized UID along with your device config, which is kind of enough data for Zoho to fingerprint you. They say that the randomized browser ID is used to actually count how many people are using their web browser. And within privacy settings, you can technically make it reset every time you launch the web browser, but it's still a unique identifier tied to your device type. Outside of that, their actual privacy policy is fine. If you enable anonymized stats, it does provide them with some info about how you use browser modes. And of course, signing in with a Zoho account will provide them with more information. As a company though, it looks like they have great services, then I haven't found too many complaints on them. But let's not take their word for it, let's run some real tests. While it would be better if somebody like TechLore did this experiment, as privacy isn't my main expertise, I did try some privacy and security tests in a Linux Mint virtual machine. I did these tests on common browsers like Chrome, Edge, as well as some other privacy-centric browsers such as Firefox and LibreWolf, and of course the EULA browser, both in standard and extreme modes. We first ran browser audit as a security test and Firefox in strict got the best score with 10 warnings, zero critical warnings, followed by Firefox standard and then LibreWolf. The worst score was edge with 27 warnings and a critical warning. And then EULA standard was the second worst and Chrome was the third. I do think the critical warning is an issue with just the Chromium engine in general, because the only browsers without a critical warning were Firefox and LibreWolf. Next, we tried EFF Cover Your Tracks. 
Chrome and Edge absolutely bombed this test. Firefox Standard partially blocked tracking ads and invisible trackers, while Eula in Standard Mode fully blocked ads, but only partially blocked the invisible trackers. Then Firefox, Strict, Eula Extreme, LibreWolf, and Brave all fully blocked tracking ads and invisible trackers. Although it is worth noting, Brave was the only browser that had a completely unique fingerprint, while Eula Extreme and LibreWolf had a nearly unique fingerprint. And it's weird because Firefox Strict just had a normal fingerprint. And that kind of took me by surprise because I thought LibreWolf do, would do better at fingerprint blocking. And Firefox Strict claims to block fingerprinting, but it just doesn't do so well according to this test. Eula still scored really strong with LibreWolf, but slightly behind Brave. And now finally, the webbrowser.com privacy test. And on it, Chrome, Edge, and Brave all got 30 out of 10, while every other browser got a 35 out of 10. Initially, I thought it had something to do with the Chromium engine, but Eula actually scored a little higher. And it seems like this is due to navigator tracking. I did try to run privacytools.org suite of tests, but for some reason it was giving me a blank JSON file and I couldn't figure out why. So again, I'll leave this up to privacytools.org to test themselves or another channel who is a bit more familiar with these tests. Overall, Eula seems like a good browser and I'm actually seriously impressed with it, especially for how young the browser is. It has a lot of cool features that a lot of normal people are going to care about while having pretty comparable privacy and security features to LibreWolf and Brave. While it does have some things that need to be worked out though, such as getting on par with Brave's fingerprint protection, the Linux installation process, the proprietary nature of the software, and other minor user interface issues. Even in its infancy, Eula seems to be one of the better Chromium-based browsers. And with future development, taking community feedback and all that, it could potentially be one of the best browsers, but we'll see. Overall, it is a fast browser, works great, looks good. So even though nobody seems to be talking about it, I do think it deserves just a, a little bit more attention. Just please, please make a flat pack. With all that, anything I mentioned will be linked down below. And I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and good. Bye.